Good morning, everybody. It's Christopher Sunday discussion with the four major notes update for the 6th of February 2013. Hi, everybody. Okay, let's look at the four, ma uh, four majors this morning. I'll start with the euro against US dollar on my four screen strategy. Well, the four t time frame of the CTC strategy template. Okay, so let's have a look at that weekly. All important weekly. What's been happening? As you can quite clearly see from August of last year, right through till now, uh, the euro has pretty much been gaining strength. We did go through a bit of a, a slight hiccup prior to Christmas or end of year. However, in November, we had this nice bullish up move here. And since then, it's really been breaking the highs. Breakout, pullback, and the continuation through January right up to where we are now. We are seeing consolidation now this week after last week's movement. However, last week's movement taking us above this all-important institution moving average on our, on our weekly. So what I've done is I've said, okay, great. If it remains above the institution, then happy days. Then it's just looking to confirm that that's a genuine breakout and momentum is still with us and we should still look into those high points. So what I'm using is a 13,500 13, as my support of my daily and intraday time frames. Okay, and if I do that for you right now, you'll see how price yesterday actually pulled back to it, being a nice round number. And um, if I just put in my four hour, there we go. You can see the same thing. Yes, the last couple of days we've seen price pulling back on our four hour, and then um, nice bullish engulfing candle pull back to 13, uh, 15, three, uh, the 13,500 apologies, and then moving higher. However, near term, we have had the last 16 hours, we've have seen price stalling at 13,600, and now this morning on the uh, this morning on the Asian going into the European session, you can see price has fallen over. We see a lot of selling through the Asian session. However, on our hourly, that is still above the institution moving average. So what I've done is as long as it still trades above 13,500 this week, it's still classified as positive. Okay, we're just seeing a pullback. And as long as it maintains, then great. We can look for that potential upside movement. However, if price had to fall back below 13,500, then it's, it's telling us, that we should look for potentially further setups to the downside. And what it would lead to ultimately is a bearish engulfing candle on our weekly. That wouldn't be too good because then it would tell us there were clear exhaustion at a resistance there, i.e. in the shape of the institution moving average. And therefore, for the foreseeable future, going into next week and probably the second week, we should be looking for further resistance and the outcome would be to the downside. Okay, so weekly chart, you can quite clearly see higher swings in our weekly. So it's imperative that price finds support now at 13,500 for this week, okay? And if it does, then we should see price moving to the upside. Just one thing I want to also bring to your attention is if you look at the weekly chart, you can see that the all-time low here in August, uh, sorry, July, August of last year, if you take a FIB projection to the September highs and then back down to those lows in November, you will see that 100% of the initial move has pretty much been carried out. Uh, the 100% will take us roughly around the 13800 So you could see that this move has finished that. Uh, ideally, what happens when you see a fit projection is when price moves on the second leg, it tends to, uh, we would like price to see moving 100% of the initial move that we saw through, well, in this case, through July, August up to September. So you could see that 13800 if you want to mark it down, is clearly a major resistance level above in the shape of, that all important the extension 100% and you can put those levels in okay so as it stands now guys yesterday's candle on the daily finding support at 13500 we have seen some pullbacks intraday i.e on the asian session it, it price needs to stay above 13500 you can either do one or two things you can either short into 13500 which is quite quite aggressive because it's quite close to that support area or what you can do is wait be patient bide your time and wait for that uh, possible bounce at this level okay so watch what price does today in particular because we are now at a at a crossroads this is where the patience comes in as a trader um, we have broken out through a major support and resistance level we if we do find support and resistance now at this level here then we could see price reverting to the upside we have seen a lot of movement you know price moves in trends i mean that classifies it as a strong trend price moves then we have profit taking and then we have continuations price up sideways and up okay so it's imperative that we just be patient look for price to find support above 13500 look for today 
If you're looking for uh, trades to the upside, look to see price breaking above that 13,600 for a, a nice trade to the upside towards these highs we saw here last week at 13,700. On to sterling, okay, the weekly. This one not doing too well. And uh, you can quite clearly see after the, the hesitation or this major exhaustion candle I spoke about while I was trying to do some trading in South Africa, I did mention about this exhaustion candle here at prior highs here in the shape of the 16300 price just failing consecutively on the third attempt to break above this major high here. We saw one back in April, May of last year. Yet again, a nice little evening star formation here through September. And this shooting star formation, a clear exhaustion here going into the first part of the new year. And then subsequently, we saw the, the major sell-off. The major sell-off taking us below a major support and resistance level in the shape of this uh, support that we saw in uh, early November. And that roughly around the 5,900 mark. And not being able to actually to, to hang on to those. Um, Take us back to the institution on a weekly. You can quite clearly see a lot of selling into the institution moving average. However, this candle over here doing us a favor and confirming that sentiment was still looking negative long term. And sure enough, we are seeing a third week of potential downside. Uh, that's reflected also in our daily charts. You can quite clearly see all that momentum to the downside. Uh, prior to November, we were trading above the, the, the institution moving average on our, on, on our daily time frame, which constituted that we were seeing further uh, positive than this. Uh, bar this uh, selling over here, but we're still above the institution. So we're still seeing positives. However, um, with price failing here uh, in December, November to break above those those prior highs we saw last year, around September, October, didn't bode well uh, sentiment. So what we saw is price really finding resistance here. And in doing so, price reverted to the downside. So shorting opportunities back towards the institution or back to this, this, this current support here. And now you'll notice that it's trading below the institution moving average. Beforehand, above the institution. Now, trading below it. And you can see quite clearly, up until that point, the CTC was pretty much telling us we should have been looking for uh, bullish momentum. However, near term, you can quite clearly see the CTC histograms on the other side very much negative. And that concurs because we are trading below the institution. And as long as that happens, then we should be looking for nothing more than selling opportunities. So patience was key. Yes. Yet again on this particular pair because we saw price selling into major support on Friday and then we had a bounce, a psychological bounce. People were taking profits and sure enough, yesterday's candle, the Tuesday candle is now confirmed that this uh, near term support is now null and void. And you can see on the engine session this morning, we've seen price breaking below that 15700 and trading lower. So where to? Well, as it stands now, we could go all the way down. I mean, ideally, you could take it all the way down to this major support and resistance level here in the shape of the 13,500. 13,500 being a major support and resistance level on our weekly and monthly targets. It's a, it's, it constitutes a huge support level. Price has bounced each time we have addressed the 13, uh, the 15,300 mark. And if I just zoom out, you can quite clearly see, there we go, how it has in the past a uh, number of years been a major support. This is a weekly chart, guys. So if we get below 30, uh, sorry, the 15,300, there is a lot of room for nosediving. Okay, there's a huge amount of space. There is a slight consolidation point here, roughly around the 1500 mark or so. However, there's not a lot of hesitation. A lot of there's not much over here in, in in shape that's going to stop it from falling. So psychologically, this is a a, a great target to go towards long term, uh, as long as momentum still favours to the downside for sterling against the US dollar counterpart. So it. We should be looking at long term. If you're trading long term, guys, look towards those 15,300 marks to the downside. So intraday, make a note of that. 15,700, a four hour chart, clearly price support and resistance. You can see uh, price hesitating here on, on, on over a number of uh, occasions. And you can see the, the long term trend is very much negative up until this point. You can see that the histograms on either side is very much red. And because we're trading below the institution, sentiment is negative so you should be looking for shorting opportunities don't be buying against market sentiment because you'll be trading against uh, the momentum not good so now we're trading below 15700 let's look for further shorting opportunities okay as long as 15700 stays above price that will constitute now to our intraday resistance level and as long as that main uh, is as long as price remains below 15700 we should be looking for nothing more than shorting opportunities Onto the US dollar says Frank. Let's have a look at the weekly just to guide us what's been happening. 
Okay, we take the all-time low here in August of 2011, funny enough, to the current high that we've seen recently, uh, as in July, August of last year. Uh, the Fib retracement, because you can see quite clearly the institution is still above price, and you can see up until that point, the histogram is very much red. Even though we are seeing upside movement, the histogram is still very red. Remember that the CTC strategy is a very lagging indicator. Okay, it's not a very aggressive trade, it's a very lagging indicator. So um, it tends to, if you're looking to, to trade it on your uh, more aggressive intraday time frames, I would suggest against it because um, it's more lagging. However, the nice thing about this though, this particular template though, when price is really moving in one direction, it tends to tell you where the sentiment still lies uh, in that long term stuff. So yeah, you quite clearly see I've taken the low to the current high. You can see the 23, the 38, and the 50%, 61.8. And if you want to plot in the 78.6, please do. I don't really talk about the 78.6 Fib line, but it is nonetheless there. So you can still use it as a target. You'll notice that um, getting back to the to the hard right edge, you can see price through September, October, November, December, uh, looking for support at the 23.6. Okay. And... Um, Near term, you can see price falling over and making a lower swing, lower swing. Remember, the, the, the one thing to remember over here is if price is negative, then you want to see lower swings, okay? The highs need to be lower, and you can quite clearly see over this period over here, price, even this consolidation, you can see price failed to really build on those highs, and in doing so, falling over on each occasion and making lower swings. The 20 pair of moving average, as well as a 50 now above price beforehand was a bit mixed, but going into the new year, you can quite clearly see that price is now uh, trading below these two two points and in doing so it's remaining below the first fib retracement area in the shape of the 23.6 okay so everything looking good at the moment the, the requirements of the ctc histogram oh sorry this particular template is we need to see the last arrow in this case being red the candle would have to be red the histograms on either side would have to be red but all importantly the moving averages would also need to concur and be above price resisting it so on our weekly we're looking negative uh, on this particular pair. However, on the daily, you can quite clearly see, even though we are trading below that level, that 23.6 fib uh, area here in the shape of, what's it, 92, 93. So I want to make sure, let's make it 93. So at 93, there we go. That's where the 23.6 mark is on my 92, 93. Now I just want to make sure I get this right, guys. So on the daily, there we go. There's a 23.6 mark above price. Okay. So well above it. And as long as it maintains uh, below this area, then ultimately we should be looking for nothing more than shorting opportunities. Okay. So you can see quite clearly here through the daily, through September of last year, you can see the sentiment very much negative. We have had pullbacks, but overall price has been making lower swings. And as long as that maintains or is the case, then we should be looking for shorting opportunities. Okay, so you can see price recently, and um, you can see through December in particular, we did see price finding support at 9.10. Okay, so you've got to make a note of that. Very, very important, because these these errors will become very, very uh, proliferant, especially on your intraday trading. It'll give you an idea of where potential targets are likely. So as it stands at the moment now, you can see that price over since December has been trading within this range. Okay, and... Um, so what you want to do is you want to put all these the, these particular uh, areas in on your charts. Okay, you you would have to be well aware of where these major support and resistance levels are. So very very important to put these on your charts. Okay, so near term here on the daily, you can quite clearly see price has hesitated. We had two consecutive dojis or indecisive candles, uh, very little trading ranges. However, the one thing to remember here is previously 9.10 was support. Now, over the past day, in particular Friday, we saw a lot of selling to start with through the first part of the day. However, going into the latter part of the US session, you can see price pulled all the way back and made this hammer. Uh, the hammer tends to favor support, but you can see quite clearly if you took the 9.10 as your, your, your yardstick, you can see quite clearly that price is trading below that level. So what does it mean to say? Well, ideally, if this... If this is still to remain negative, we want to see 910 now becoming our new resistance. Okay, prior support should become our new resistance. Okay, we are seeing a lot of buying uh, through the latter part uh, for the start of the, today in particular. 
And if I go to my four hour chart, you can quite clearly see the last four hours has been very, very positive. However, you can see through the Asian session, we had a lot of resistance, price didn't really move much. Notice the histogram on the four hour, very much negative on the other side. And all importantly, the institution is still above price. So you can see you're making lower swings. And as long as we see low swings, that means that price is looking negative. Okay, you don't wanna be buying against market sentiment. Okay, rather let the price move. And if it gets above major support and resistance levels and the positiveness is still there, then we look to profit from them. Otherwise, stay clear. Okay, the histogram is telling us, the template is telling us we should be looking for negative sentiment. Okay, so yes, it, near term, we are seeing a spike to the upside. Happy days. However, if this is to be a major support, uh, a very um, a game changer for today, then we would need to see the four hour closing higher than this major support and resistance level in the shape of the 9100. Okay, so you can see how I'm, I'm painting a picture, guys. Okay, so price has been doing that. It's been doing that for a reason. It's broken below these major support and resistance levels near term. It's got to find resistance. Okay. If it doesn't find resistance, then ultimately we're not going to see any further uh, shorting opportunities because on the daily it's looking negative because price is trading below. See, it's trading below a prior major support. Okay. The, the, the acting candle now that's in play is our daily and it is above this support area as we speak. However, it's a daily candle. Okay. This candle will only close this evening at the close of the US session. So it's got a whole day to sit and play tic-tac-toe with this area here. You can quite clearly see price traded below or above this area on two prior daily occasions and fell to close above it. Okay, so if you are trading, looking for, and this is another one where we're looking for that, um, that decisive candle as we did in the euro. We have to be patient. Trading is patience, part key patience. So you've got to take that into consideration. So as it stands now, ideally we want to see the four hour can candle closing lower. A lot of wicks here. You can quite clearly see a lot of fishing over here on our four hour time frames. So we get another candle that does exactly that. That's what they'll do. This candle will close effectively at 10 a.m. GMT this morning. So wait for this four hour candle to close. If it closes higher, then we're probably looking for upside. Uh, we can target the trend line here or back towards the institution. If not, if it closes lower, that's going to give us a nice uh, shooting star, bearish candle at a resistance. And that will tell us for short term, near term, we should be looking down towards a 905 mark. But ultimately, for the remainder of this week, if that's the case, then we should be targeting our weekly low. Next Fib uh, retracement area would be in the shape of the 38.2. Last pair of the day, the US dollar Japanese yen. And wow, has this one really taken off, guys. I mean, this, the start and the end of last year into going into this year, we've just seen nothing more. I mean, that's a good 72 degree angle on this particular pair. And great, because we saw price spend a lot of time bottoming out roughly around the 7600 mark. Uh, through August, September, October, November, December of 2011, going into 12, bounce, further consolidation through the major part of mid-year last year, and then going into the latter part of this year, uh, last year, sorry, we saw price really taking off. Uh, a lot of strength, Japanese market not really doing too well. Um, the government out there throwing billions at trying to rejuvenate the economy. Okay, so what it's done is it's seen price really move to the upside. And what you can do to give a feel of what's happening, you can take the all-time high, which happened to be way back in 2008, to the current low. I'm looking at my weekly chart, Fib retracement. You can quite clearly see how Fibs on these time frames have worked out really well. A lot of institutions use these Fib lines. 23.6 happened to be our major support and resistance level. You can see through bits of uh, 2010 going to 11, 12, 8400, nice round number was a 23.6 Fib retracement line. And you can see how price targeted these areas over the years. Since then, near term, this is where the hard work money's been made. We can see price hesitating as we broke above this uh, 23.6, 8400, going into a major resistance level in the shape of the institution. Price consolidated over that week. However, the following week, still showing that the intention or the initiative or the momentum was very much in favor to the upside and a bullish engulfing candle to the upside. Once that occurred, you can see the end of the week closed lower as people took profits by the end of that week. And that consolidated above the institution, which is great because it, that's what we wanted. Now, now it's broken above it, needs to find support. And then the more moment, uh, as it finds more support there, then you find more people come to the party. And then that sentiment continues to drive it to the upside. And that's exactly what happened. We saw that going into the latter part of December, price moving higher. And our next target would have been the all important 38.2 mark at 80, 89, a nice round number, which you can see also 
constituted to a major support and resistance level in the past. Going way back to 2008, 9 through 10, a lot of support. And you can see how price consolidated at these areas. Okay, a lot of hesitation into it, then pulling back, then moving back into it, consolidating very, very. You can see before when it's broken a major support and resistance level in the shape of the institution, uh, the, the Fib line. A lot of there's less hesitation in these moves, but as it gets closer to major support and resistance levels, you can see the hesitation in the candles, a lot of wicks, and not a lot of body. And then once it gets above it, then you see a nice juicy body. So you can see once these areas of support and resistance have been broken, that um, momentum comes back into play and you start getting more decisive moves, and in this case, very much top heavy. Okay, so moving higher, you can see the last week actually consolidating at the current uh, near term level which happens to be the 50 uh, percent line on the fib retracement you can quite clearly see here price also hesitating over an, a number of years at this level so people are very aware of these target points they'll use them as targets and now at, at, at the 93 level so now you can see the week that's in play now is moving above the 93 we are going to see hesitation and that you can see on our daily a lot of hesitation as we head into these areas there we go there's a 93 as long as it maintains above 93 now this should become our new support and if we find support above 93, then they're going to be saying, okay, great, we've broken another major uh, FIB retracement area or psychological support and resistance level in the shape of the 50% retracement on our weekly. Then they'll start building on it. That's all it is. Price moves towards target points. Whenever you get into a trade, you've got to have a, a, a physical viable target. Okay. Once you reach that target or going into that target, you would take profits off the table. Hence the reason why you start seeing price uh, um, the momentum in that trade tending to get smaller and smaller. So you see a lot more hesitation before when you're seeing a lot of clear decisiveness. A lot of hesitation going into the 90 mark, which happens to be a major support and resistance level. Once it got above it, so you can see a pullback, consolidation, and then further buying into the next level, which was our 50% line on our weekly. Now we're above 93. What we want to see is price remain above 93. And then if we can remain above 93, then ultimately our next target would be the 61.8, which would be way up here at right about 97.50, which will bring us back towards this other consolidated range here, going back to the latter part or the early part of 2009 and 2008 in particular. Okay, so very, very important. So now we can do our analysis. Great. As long as it uh, remains above 9,300, then we should look for price to, uh, to, to continue to the upside. You can see quite clearly through October right through to now, everything's been in our favor. The histogram has been very much blue on the other side, telling us sentiment was still looking higher. All our moving averages, even these space started got a lot of air between them. It tells us that this is a very strong uptrend. Okay, so on our four-hour time frame, our intraday time frames, so you've got to put these levels of support and resistance on. So you clearly have an idea of where price, what price has got to do, where it's got to remain above or below in order to look for potential uh, setups. Okay, so looking intraday. Let's see and see if we can uh, see if there's any up or potential trades. Last eight hours has been very indecisive. We've had a very top heavy candle here in the shape of this particular one over here reaching high. This tends to be um, in an uptrend. This tends to be one of a bogey candle. It tells you that there's uh, less sentiment to the upside. And sure enough, the last uh, four hours has presented us with a candle which looks like a bit of an exhaustion. So we think we'll potentially like to see a pullback. If anything, you can take your FIB retracement, the start of this uptrend here on the 4-hour. Take the low to the current high, this candle over here that's in play. Okay, you can see the 23.6 is below price. So now on an hourly, the 23.6 area would act as our near-term support. So 93.60 on our hourly, 93.60, there we go, would be our support, intraday support. As long as price remains above that area, then there's more likelihood for price to continue to build going into the US session or going into the latter part of this week. If, however, it gets below the 93 and closes lower on a bearish engulfing candle, then we should be targeting the 38.2, which is roughly around the 92, what's that, 30 mark, if I'm not, 93.30. So that would, if you take it from the lows here, there we go, let's do the hourly. Fantastic. Okay, so there we go. Target the 38, which will bring us back towards the 93.3, and then back towards 50%, which happens to be our major support and resistance level in the shape of the pullback fib at 9361 and then back to zero again so you can quite clearly see look for your candles to confirm price sentiment bearish engulfing bullish engulfing and then target these areas to the downside okay so it's that simple otherwise hope you have a fantastic trading day if you are using this template 
please ensure you follow the rules of it, okay, and you back it up with sound money management, guys. Very, very important. Okay, you're gonna have the best strategy in the world. If you don't have solid money management rules, you will fail. Okay, it'll be that much harder to really gain from trading currencies. So it's imperative to back it up with sound money management rules. Otherwise, hope you have a fantastic trading day. Please have a look to see if there's any news out there that's gonna really factor in price action, depending on which pair that you're trading. Very, very important to have an understanding of the major news announcements. So look at those fundamentals out there, okay? Don't trade them religiously. Look at them and see how they would reflect in price action, especially the ones that are very, very important. Uh, we have today, what have we got? We've got German factory orders month and month for Europe. Could be one that we're looking at. They're looking for potential strength. Prior, the prior month was, uh, prior week was quite negative. Um, we're expecting a slightly higher figure. So that could be quite good. Um, look for that to see if it plays out on the European or the Euro cross pairs as well. So back to then in guys, very, very important. Otherwise, I'll leave you to it. Have a fantastic trading day and I'll be back with you guys tomorrow morning. Until then, trade serenely.